call to serve comes to each of us in very different and perhaps unexpected ways. When Mary is called to be the mother of the Son of God, she accepts the mission with great humbleness and grace. Even in times when God's call seems impossible to fulfill, let us respond with infinite trust in the same manner as the Blessed Mother. Good evening, and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. Please stand. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Sing of Mary, Meek and Lowly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Amen. I'm Father Muldowney. I'm very happy to be here with you as we begin our time together here at St. Catherine of Siena, Moscow. I am thrilled to be your pastor. I am thrilled to be out of Scranton. And I am thrilled to be out of the Chancery office. That being said, my friends, today as we gather, we gather to celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a wonderful way to begin our time together. As we gather for this celebration, let us first acknowledge the times when we fail and we fall to sin, and let us ask the Lord for his mercy and his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. to God in the highest. 
Let us pray. O God, who looking on the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, raised her this grace that your only begotten Son was born of her according to the flesh, and that she was crowned this day with surpassing glory. Grant that through her prayers, that saved by the mystery of your redemption, we may merit to be exalted by you on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Chronicles. David assembled all Israel in Jerusalem to bring the ark of the Lord to the place that he had prepared for it. David also called together the sons of Aaron and the Levites. The Levites bore the ark of God on their shoulders with poles as Moses had ordained according to the word of the Lord. David commanded the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their kinsmen as chanters, to play on musical instruments, harps, lyres, and cymbals, to make a loud sound of rejoicing. They brought in the ark of God and set it within the tent, which David had pitched for it. Then they offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. When David had finished offering up the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when that which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast at which you nursed. He replied, Rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Once again, I am very happy to be here with you. Uh, several years ago, probably about three years ago, Father Simon called me at the Chancery office and he asked me if I would cover a weekend when he was away. I accepted that invitation. And in between the two masses, I walked around the grounds here and I really had a good feeling about this parish. It's like a liken to a student that goes in search of a college. A lot of times when they step foot on that campus, they have a good feeling and they say, boy, this feels right. I had that feeling and for you know some time, I worked in the chancery office for a total of 13 and a half years, most recently 11 years. And as time progressed, I felt that I really desired to return to parish ministry. And when this parish the opportunity came available to come here as your pastor. I had that conversation with the bishop. He was very gracious, and here I am, and I'm very, very happy to be here with you. Now, when Father Simon and I did the transition, when we did a little bit of a turnover, he said, I have to tell you there's one crucial thing that you need to be aware of at St. Catherine of Siena Parish. And I said, what's that? He caught my attention. He said, the parishioners of St. Catherine of Siena Parish really demand and expect long, long homilies. <laughs> so with that being said, um, those were the words of advice that he gave me. So he told me, if you want to preach for 30 or even 40 minutes, he said, they will be very, very pleased and very happy to hear your words. I will tell you, I will never preach 30 minutes. <laughs> so you could relax and certainly take a deep breath. But what a great weekend to begin here, my ministry as your pastor here at St. Catherine's, when we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. What a great, great start that you and I have an opportunity to embrace and to share and to give thanks for. And when we think about the Assumption, we think about how the Blessed Virgin Mary was so faithful to God. We all know Mary's journey of faith. You know, as a young girl, she was called by the angel Gabriel and given that wonderful message to be the mother of the Savior. And if you remember that scripture passage from St. Luke, we know that Mary says, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word, your will. 
And then Mary begins a life of service and a dedication to God's will and not her own. Faithful servant. St. John Paul II really, I think, phrased and gave a wonderful definition of the assumption. And he said, Mary's assumption reminds us her return to heaven. She shows us a way to God. She shows us a way to heaven. And she shows us a way of life. She shows us a way of life now, doesn't she? Think about her life. She was the perfect disciple of Jesus, the one who listened to God's word, was obedient, and was full of grace, allowing God's grace to work in and through her. So when we think about our own lives, many of us will struggle, many of us will question, many of us will struggle with our faith and life circumstances, but we look to Mary as the model of discipleship. We know that her life was not the easiest, now was it? Her life was filled with some challenges. Think about the time when Mary and Joseph were on their way and Jesus broke away from the crowd and found his way back to the temple. Think about that mother's frustration, her worry and her anxiety. Think about Mary at the foot of the cross seeing her son who was beaten and spat upon and suffered a terrible, torturous death. She was right there at the cross with Christ. But this day gives us great hope because Mary is assumed back into heaven. And in the Eastern Church, it's called the Dormition of Mary, where Mary falls asleep. And we celebrate the fact that she, through her intercession, allows us to move forward in our faith especially when our faith is weak. As we gather this day, as we gather for this feast, may we ask God to give us the grace that we need, the fortitude that we need to move forward, and through Mary's intercession, may we always have obedience to God our Father. Amen? Amen. strong in our faith, and we profess our faith in Christ Jesus, in his life, his death, and his resurrection. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life to the world to come, amen. In a spirit of faith, hope, and love, we now bring before the Lord our prayers, our petitions, and our needs. For the church on earth, may we, through the intercession of Mary, our mother, continue to grow in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders and all those entrusted with creating policy, may the spirit of wisdom guide their decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry for community and friendship, may the Lord provide for them, encouraging relationships of love and care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in this faith community, may their daily interactions be animated by the spirit of peace and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, 
May they know the joy of resurrection as they see God's face in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ralph Semenza, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for all the gifts and blessings you bestow upon us. We ask you to hear the prayers we have offered this day. We make our prayers to your beloved Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Please let us sing our offertory hymn, Immaculate Mary. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we celebrate on the assumption of the Holy Mother of God, that it may lead us to your pardon and confirm us in the perpetual thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and as a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since her body, since our own, but her own body, she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ may make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are past pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, <clears throat> as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join and sing our communion hymn, My Soul Proclaims.
Let us pray. Having partaken of this heavenly table, we beseech your mercy, Lord our God, that we who honor the assumption of the Mother of God may be freed from every threat of harm through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Have a great weekend, everyone. Please join us sing our closing hymn, Hail Holy Queen. <clears throat>